hold on sorry for the delay guys sorry this is very disruptive when this happens it's a problem with live stream you know you're kind of like subject to yeah I can't I can't figure it out okay so can't figure it out the regular way so we'll boy some of you are so irritated now you're going to leave the broadcast so I, I apologize it's not something I can control here I wish I knew what the cause is. <clears throat> You're still here. I know Periscope is back, but it's uh, YouTube that's not. So YouTube always takes a while. It may take a couple of minutes before it restores. So, uh, yeah, I can figure it out. Uh, pap on king then I stop the broadcast and I'll go research it but then I can't broadcast you know I, I can't pay attention to what you guys are saying and have to do to go through this so it's 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 really difficult okay hold on so YouTube is back for some people so let me uh I don't even know how you find the YouTube broadcast in here. I reboot it, so hopefully it's a little bit better. Okay, so okay, so we are back. Okay, so that's a problem with YouTube is when it goes down, you really can't uh, you can't um, easily find it, and it doesn't restore automatically. So there's a lot of extra steps. the The YouTube one does not dis get disconnected. Uh, no, uh, you can remove the uh, SIM card. Uh, it will not remove triangulation, but it will prevent uh, the back doors. So that's actually one of the solutions. Okay, let me let me tell you uh, since uh, you know some of you are you know wanting to hear what the actual solution is. So I'm gonna tell you that I want to have a Linux phone. So so due to back. Okay, let me let me uh, let me get right down to the point here. I want a Linux phone. Uh, I can't wait. I order, ordered my Librem 5. When the Pine phone is going to come come out, I'm going to order that. Uh, and you know, a lot, a lot of money is already tied up in things that I can't even I can't even hold in my hands. So I'm saying, what 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 is the solution? So there is a solution. The problem is it's not a perfect solution, but it works. So this is the solution I have today. So right now. If I want to be a little bit safer, my only option is to not carry these phones and instead carry a BlackBerry Bold 9900. That's in my flip phone video. So that's what I use. I have a, you know, a, uh, I have a BlackBerry Bold uh, 9900. Now, that is a very basic device. And by basic, the, the only thing that you can really do with a BlackBerry phone is text, get phone calls, and uh, very minimal other things. You can't even go to a website, really. So that is really not not suitable for what I do because I got to go to my YouTube account and answer your comments all day. So I can't, ever since I got too active on my YouTube account, I can't leave this phone anymore because I'm stuck. I got to have some way to access the web. And a BlackBerry phone is useful for making calls, but it's not really useful for for going to access the internet and go to a website. And that's really all I need is access to a website, access to, uh, access to calls and texts and, and, and so on. So, so I said, so what's the solution? So, so since I can't get a hold of a Librem 5 and I can't get a hold of a, uh, of a uh, uh, Pine phone, the question is what is available today that can be used and it will have limitations and I'm going to tell you how I'm going to minimize those limitations so they actually work for me with 90% uh, effectiveness for security, 90%. The, now the Librem 5 is, is closer to 100% 
the Pine phone is closer to 100%. Uh, the other solutions are more like 70%, but I can up it to 90% with a few moves. And what I'm going to talk about is something called UB ports. We're going to talk about UB ports. So if you don't know what UB ports is, it's a uh, it's uh, started by this guy in Germany, and basically UB ports is a fork of the original Ubuntu Touch. So uh, some years back in 2015, there was an Ubuntu Touch, and the uh, canonical the uh, the uh, owner of Ubuntu gave up on the Ubuntu Touch project. Uh, Ubuntu Touch. Just to, to make it clear for some of you who don't know, know what, what, what it's all about. Ubuntu Touch is a platform that is basically, uh, you know, uh, allows for, uh, for uh, <clears throat> the screen to adapt to the different device sizes. So if you're on a small tablet or a phone, it will adapt the screen and the desktop to fit that environment. So that's the Ubuntu Touch. And that was originally done by Ubuntu, so way back when, and then they abandoned the project, except this one guy started to work on it and then started a community, and he looks like a kid. He, he, he doesn't look very old at all. Uh, you know, he looks like, uh, when he started it, he, he looks like, I don't think he, he looked even 18 at the time. He looks so young. Anyway, he started this uh, UB Ports community and uh, and UP ports uh, actually uh, you know started to release some some things and they just started to release something in August so th the latest one was released in August and they actually like late August and they actually have a version that they the development versions are released in October and it's starting to actually look good okay so here's the thing that that uh, I, I'm uh, going to tell you about some of these devices because the problem is there's a lot of sol supposed solutions and they're all limited by device. For example, you can't just take and say, well, I'm going to install Sailfish OS on my device. Oh, I'm going to use something called Postmarket OS. Oh, I'm going to do, you know, all these different kind of things that are around. Uh, Sailfish is Android, but, uh, but uh, Postmarket OS, for example, that's Linux. So now why Linux? The reason for Linux is because it's open source. So a lot of the code that relates to Wi-Fi triangulation is not on Linux. Wi-Fi triangulation is, does not exist on Linux. That's not code that's on Linux. And it's easily proven too, because all we have to do is go to Chrome and see if you can get Wi-Fi triangulation when you're running Chromium on a Chrome, uh, on, uh, on a Linux machine. And I can easily check that. I have a, I have a way to check for Wi-Fi triangulation. I can easily check that. So I'm going to try that on on uh, Lineage OS. I'm going to install Lineage OS on an Android. I have a Google Pixel. I'm going to install it on that, and then I will tell you if Wi-Fi triangulation still exists because that's one of the dangers uh, that that we uh, we want to overcome is Wi-Fi triangulation. Red Amore. Red Amore is going to call me a. Uh, uh, a moron again so so anyway that's uh, that's um, that's um, one of the things that uh, uh, that I want to find out first is is a yes come on Reddit come on you know uh, Ron Waxman says moron to me every day so <laughs> come on Reda don't worry about it Come on, man! You just—I said you sounded like uh, you sounded like uh, Waxman. Okay. So anyway, um, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try uh, to put uh, Lineage OS, which is uh, uh, kind of the most popular of the uh, custom ROMs for Android, and we're gonna see. Uh, we're going to see. Yes, you can say something. I'm screwed totally. I still have Facebook. Well, you're always screwed. So, um, uh, so I'm going to try that out. But I don't have high hopes for it, guys. Um, to me, the uh, the Wi-Fi Wi-Fi triangulation is likely in the original Android code, and unless you specifically remove it, it's going to be there, and it's tied to the hardware because of the uh, Android machines 
have all the hooks to Wi-Fi triangulation. And Lineage OS wants to duplicate the behavior and feeling of a Android, and of course they want to do Wi-Fi triangulation. Why? Because how to use apps like Waze. So if, if let's say you want to use uh, let's say you want to use uh, Wi-Fi triangulation because you want to use Waze. You know, Google owns Waze. Uh, 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 do you use Waze, Rada? Do you use Waze? So some of you use Waze, and you know that you need to use Wi-Fi triangulation on Waze. So if you're going to offer the Waze app on Lineage OS, well, obviously you have to support Wi-Fi triangulation. So I don't think you can get away and say, uh, you know, they're not going to have Wi-Fi triangulation on Lineage OS. I don't believe it just because if you're going to have an Android app, the Android apps are going to expect that behavior. It's a safe app. Okay, listen to Reddit there. Thank you, that L Lakota guy. Thank you, A-Master ZP. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, on uh, It's better on YouTube, Master ZP, yes. So, anyway, having said that, I'm going to come up with a different answer, and I'm going to use Ubuntu Touch. Ubuntu Touch, uh, you know, has been in the news lately as well. It's almost like every, everything is coming around to a, this, uh, a particular timing. And all of these... Uh, Linux solutions are, are actually happening at the same time. They're all happening in 2019. So some of these solutions have been being built, but they're just not getting the press. UB ports, Ubuntu Touch, has not been getting any press at all, and it's been in the background, and it's mostly done in Europe. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to try it out. Now, let me just tell you about uh, Ubuntu Touch, because this is a solution that is exciting for those of us looking for a Linux phone that can do something basic, uh, uh, but good enough to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, what do I need in a phone today that I just cannot do without? Okay, well, the phone has to have LTE. Okay, so that, uh, you can see the problem there when you have a BlackBerry Bowl that I was recommending. No weather app, zucking apps. Okay, LTE. Uh, the reason is, of course, you want higher speed. And 3G is much more limited, and actually, some 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 uh, companies do not support do not support uh, 3G like Verizon and AT and T. So I use T-Mobile. T-Mobile supports 3G, but I I wish there's some uh, some other uh, solution. Thank you for the super hearts, Mario. So so uh, given that, then I'm starting to think. So what 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 do I what do I uh, what do I uh, uh, need so I need LTE. I need obviously a phone to make calls, receive calls. I need the ability to do messaging and texting. So texting nowadays, you know, I I hardly ever answer the phone. Most of my interaction on a phone is actually, you know, mostly uh, uh, texting. I I hardly ever answer the phone. So texting is not is not. Uh, something that I can do without. Now, fortunately, even the old phones going to 3G, BlackBerry Bold, all of those have texting, but you cannot use the standard flip phone because that doesn't have good texting ability because it doesn't have a keyboard. So anything older than a BlackBerry Bold, like one of those flip phones, first of all, the flip phones are 2G, and secondly, they don't, they, they don't really have a way to do texting very well. A BlackBerry Bold has a keyboard. So given that, either you need a touch screen or a keyboard. So a BlackBerry Bold has a keyboard. And any newer device, newer than a BlackBerry Bold, has a touch screen. But all of them are Android or iOS. So now, given all these limitations, uh, uh, I know that I need to have something uh, that has LTE with the ability to do texting. And unfortunately, the only device that can do that are devices with touch screens. They pretty much stop making things with keyboards without touch screen, without uh, 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 touch screens uh, after the BlackBerry Bowl. That's the last one. So after the BlackBerry Bowl, there's no, you can't buy that anymore. Everything is a touch screen, but they're all Android. So if you can install uh, Ubuntu Touch, which is Linux, on a Android device, wouldn't that solve the issue somewhat? And there's still going to be some problems, but if you can install Linux on a Android, then a lot of the 
Android code, the specific code that is so dangerous about the Android, we can eliminate. And will the phone work, in, at least in a basic way, work for us? Well, here's the story, guys. You can run Linux on a Ubuntu Touch phone. And there's some phones you can buy that will be compatible. The only thing is it's limited to a list. There's a, only a limited set of phones you can use. You cannot use every kind of phone. Okay, so I bought one of those phones, and in my case, I bought a phone called a OnePlus One, which was made in 2014. So I ordered a OnePlus One, and I paid $59 for it. And the specs of a OnePlus One are actually pretty good. It's not bad. It's, it's actually competitive with, you know, with the... Uh, uh, you know, an iPhone 6, 6S Plus, okay, a 6S. So it's, it's, uh, it's actually, which is about the same time period. So a OnePlus would be, you know, roughly around the same time period as a 6S, and, uh, which is powerful enough for what we need to do. And so what can I do with a OnePlus running Linux? Well, I'm going to tell you what I can do with it. I can make phone calls. Good. I can make, uh, I can make, uh, uh, I can do texting. Good. Okay. That's settled. It's LTE. Yeah. It's a modern device. Anything after 2013 and above can do LTE. So this can do LTE. No problem. So OnePlus can do the LTE. So what else? Uh, well, I can install uh, Firefox, Chromium, any kind of uh, uh, uh browser that exists on Linux, you can install on a Linux phone, like an Ubuntu Touch phone. So, for example, if you want to use Chromium, you can use Chromium, which is kind of like Chrome. And you can run Chrome as well. So, so let's say you don't want to yet run uh, Chrome because you think it's Google. Okay, so run Firefox. So, can you do it on the Linux phone? The answer is yes. So, that means you can run modern stuff on a cell phone without having to be under the yoke of Google. And all you need is a sucking $59 one plus one. And those, at the minimum, I would survive with that. Now, I can't run Waze. I can't run, you know, Facebook. Uh, you can run Facebook, but you don't want to. Uh, oh, please, another one of the Android and Linux. Stop that. Stop that. I don't want to hear that. Okay, why don't you go program it so that it runs like uh, runs like Linux? Okay, <clears throat> so so uh, <clears throat> so uh, anyway, I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, really really uh, interested in this. I'm actually going to make a video. I'm going to so so I don't know if this can be one video or two videos, but tomorrow I'm going to install Lineage OS on an actual Android Google Pixel. Okay, <clears throat> and then. Uh, 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 I don't even know anything about the OnePlus, OnePlus company, Jerry. I have no idea. <clears throat> I don't even know uh, what a OnePlus company is. All I know is it's compatible with a Linux, uh, Linux uh, uh, operating system called Ubuntu Touch, which I will install. I already got it all pre-installed already. I, I'm ready, but the phone will be delivered on Monday. So, so I'm going to get it on Monday. And uh, yeah, you can do command line on it too, but uh, hopefully you don't have to do that. So we're, we're, the question is, will it work with touch? That's why it's called Ubuntu Touch. Uh, yes, it requires rooting the Android and installing Ubuntu Touch on it, which I will do. It's very simple to do. So that is something that I will do. And sorry for people on YouTube that you're like I'm bouncing around and with all these interruptions in the broadcast for unknown reasons, my broadcast is dropping and, and I can't... Uh, uh, can't uh, figure it out. Linux isn't the only game in town. Well, I don't know what other game to use right now because every game is uh, using Android hardware. So I need to get away from that. We need to start coming up with a solution that eventually gets rid of the Android hardware. Now, why is the Android hardware and why does what is specific about Android that we need to worry about? Um, and why am I concerned about it? I already told you that there are two main spying hardware firmware capabilities on any Android and iOS phone okay I have two uh, don't, don't rush Eagle source let me go test it first before you start uh, going searching around on Amazon say I'm gonna buy that don't, don't rush let me 
Let me test it first. I'm going to get it on Monday. <coughs> and we'll see if it's even reasonably uh, functional. If, if there are so many bugs that doesn't even work. We'll see if it even reasonably functions. Because if it does, then at least there's something usable that I only spent $59 on. 59 bucks was all I spent for this zucking phone. And it's a pretty good phone. Equivalent to an iPhone 6S. So, uh, you know, which is... Not a bad generation of iPhones. iPhone 6S wasn't bad. I have an iPhone 6S Plus. I have two of them. So, nerdy. Nico. So, anyway, uh, I, I'm going to try it out. And, again, what are the reasons for, for thinking Linux here? Because Wi-Fi triangulation is not... Uh, hello, Nico. Welcome back. So, so, uh, so Wi-Fi triangulation isn't going to be... Uh, uh, possible on Linux because there's no code for Wi-Fi triangulation but it is in the Android hardware okay for those of you who don't know what Wi-Fi triangulation is I have several videos in fact so many videos talk about it and uh, Wi-Fi triangulation is, is specifically a capability that allows the phone to find you within six zucking feet and the two companies that track you within six zucking feet on a constant basis are Apple and Google and it doesn't matter what your settings are you cannot turn it off there's no off switch as long as I carry this phone Apple can find me within six zucking feet and if you don't trust me there's find my phone go to run find my phone and see where you are okay there's no way to shut it down so Linux doesn't have that so by simply by having Linux on there, that's wiped out. And all the different limitations that I have on the phone are eliminated because there's nothing that stops me from doing what I want to do on a Linux device. Okay, Secret Snack Bar. Watch on YouTube. Don't watch on Periscope. Secret Snack Bar. Watch on YouTube. Okay, so that's my uh, objective is to see if this is reasonably used. If it is, it's not going to be uh, uh, as complete as a Librem 5 or a Pine phone. And the reason, yeah, cars run on Linux. The, the reason is, uh, 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 what was my point uh, before, I, before I commented on the car running Linux? So I got interrupted. Okay. Uh, thank you, Secret Snack Bar. Okay, I forgot what my point anyway. Uh, so, anyway, so so the Wi-Fi triangulation, uh, that doesn't exist in, uh, in Linux. So Wi-Fi triangulation will be wiped out. And it doesn't, however, wipe out sub certain aspects of Wi-Fi tracking, which they can do on a Librem 5 and a Pine phone. And how... How they do the uh, the protection on a Librem 5 and smartphone and I mean, in, in a uh, Pine phone is through the hardware switch. Okay, so the hardware switch only exists on a Pine phone and a Librem 5. If you can get one, I ordered you know my Librem 5 many months ago, and uh, I don't know when I'm going to get it. March? I have no idea. So it's going to take a while. Uh, I'm excited. It was expensive. And, uh, but the, if you actually find out what, what is missing, I think I can uh, solve it without spending that kind of money. I can solve some of the privacy issues uh, on a Ubuntu Touch box. Okay, so how uh, a, uh, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a Ubuntu Touch device and, and the one that I'm ordering, uh, that I ordered and I'm gonna get on Monday is a OnePlus One, which is a device from 2014. Okay, OnePlus One, and in fact, Although it was available in 2014, it wasn't really, you know, available available until 2015. So, so again, it's in the same generation. Uh, yes, it can be activated with U.S. carriers. Uh, it, so it's about the same generation, like I said, about it with a 6s plus, and you can buy one of those for 59 bucks. If not, the high end of it is like 79 bucks. So between 59 to 79, you can get this phone. And if you don't want to get that, there are other compatible phones that you can do a bunch of touch on. And they're a little older. And the, the other one is a uh, Nexus 4 and a Nexus 5. So those are three examples of devices that you can easily buy 
a Nexus 4, a Nexus 5. This is a Nexus 7. It's actually compatible with this. But I don't want to put it on this because this is not a phone. So Nexus 4, Nexus 5, OnePlus. I ordered a one. I was going to order a Nexus 5 and then I changed my mind. And, uh, and I went to uh, the OnePlus One because it's newer. And it has the better specs and the better performance. So I'm going to... Uh, Get that phone on Monday. I'm going to load a bunch of touch on it. I already got everything pre-installed. I've seen the screens and no one has really done a good video showing is it usable to use OnePlus One with Ubuntu Touch. And is it functional based on the limitations of, of what I said. There are no apps, Nico, other than what comes with Ubuntu Touch, meaning calling, message, Messaging, I believe, uh, calendar and contacts. I think that's it. The rest are all whatever you can load with Linux. Meaning they're not necessarily touch apps, but you can load any app from Linux. If you want to run OpenOffice, if you want to run uh, GIMP, you want whatever app you want to run on Linux, it will actually work because it's like a desktop with a uh, phone form factor so you can plug in an hdmi monitor and have a big screen if you want uh i well, i don't know what brew brew is but you can run anything linux i made my own app on linux it should run the other thing will run is every website you can go to any website because it's just a standard chrome firefox you can run all that so you can run brax.me you can go to my app brax.me my app runs fine on linux it, my app actually works very well on a phone form factor so when you run Brax.me on Linux on a phone, it will run very well because it's already sized for that. So that it, it, does, it, it will work well in that environment. So I, I have high expectations that Brax.me will work very well on, which is, you know, something that I really need to use it for. Okay. So uh, now you have a, a mobile development device as well. Yes. But the Librem 5 is uh, the better development device. So I am actually buying this. You, you watch the video. I'm going to make a video next week. I don't know how many days will take me to, to test it out. But I'm going to do a preliminary check to see if this is even usable and what can we do with it in a basic way without doing anything. Okay? And if this, is, if this works, guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you the advantage of this. Okay? I'm going to tell you what the, the advantage of, of this is. <clears throat> If you can do this on this Android device for 59 bucks, it will solve some of the problems that relate to privacy because we can skip Wi-Fi triangulation and then the, uh, the control of Google. Google will be out of the picture. iOS, of course, is not on an Android device. So most of Google will be out of the picture. If I can get Wi-Fi triangulation out, which is the number one problem, uh, I would be very happy. I can't get anything out of the cell baseband because the, the phone has a built-in baseband and there's no hardware kill switch that like you can do on, Librem, on a Librem 5. But for 59 bucks, which is all it costs, 59 bucks, uh, I'm okay with it. I paid 50 bucks for my BlackBerry Bold. Okay? If I pay 59 bucks for this with a nice screen, you know, it, it, uh, it, it would it would work well. So my my intent here is if I can run go to any website and run any kind of Linux app, if I can run any kind of Linux app on this, that would be fancy. But even if we don't even study what apps work fine on a phone fa form factor because of the size, I know any Linux app will work. But will it work well? Okay, because the screen size. Like yes, you can run Open Office, but I, I'm not sure you're going to like how it looks because, you know, it may be hard to reach the buttons, maybe too tiny, whatever. So, so uh, if the app makers didn't make it to be sized for phone, it's going to be, uh, yes, uh, uh, Nick, since it's open source, do you think people can create apps that will compromise you? The whole point to open source is that the code is visible to other people, but that's up to you. Yeah, I mean, you can screw yourself loading a bad app, yes. But by default, it doesn't come with any of that. You make the choice of what you want to get screwed up with. But right now, you're being screwed like crazy on a uh, Android and in uh, iOS, and you just want to say, "Can you not screw with me? Can I get a phone that doesn't have, you know, 
Google Assistant and Bixby and all this nonsense and listening devices. No Siri, nothing. Uh, but someone like me can't read. That's okay, Nico, because many, many people use the same program and they know how to code. And if they uh, looked at it and saw that somebody put malware, it's not going to be accepted because you have to, a community looks at every code that's added. Okay, so if it's inconsistent with the, what the product does, you can't just insert some spying code and say, well, why did you do this? I only see the bolt for 120 everywhere. Just wondering if you got yours from Amazon. I got it from Amazon. It's used. Uh, I got it for 50 bucks, and uh, it looks like new. It my my BlackBerry Bolt looks like new, but it's very limited. After using the BlackBerry Bolt for a while, the problem is even the websites don't launch. And the reason the websites don't launch is because it is BlackBerry's browser. It's not a new browser like Chromium which means the certificates aren't updated. So it's not actually usable to even do any basic internet stuff on a BlackBerry Bold. So it's not really useful. So I need something else. So therefore, uh, <clears throat> therefore uh, this is the solution. So anyway, I'm using, I bought a OnePlus One and you can get a, uh, a uh, Nexus 7, I mean, sorry, Nexus 5, Nexus 4 for somewhere between 59 and 79 as well. Okay, so so all of these devices that are mentioning you can get between fifty nine to seventy nine dollars. Okay, so I I'm uh, uh, if I test this and this works, there's going to be a run on these phones. If this test and this works, you know I probably caused a run on the BlackBerry Bow. A lot of people, thousands of people probably uh, you know saw the video and and many many of you bought BlackBerry Bolds like me. Uh, but you know, you invest 50 bucks and if you use it occasionally, it's kind of like using it as a burner phone. You used to have an original OnePlus. Well, you got rid of it. You'll be patiently waiting. You don't have to wait long because I will have an answer for you by next week. So by next week, I will have tried this out and I, I want to make sure that I check it out before I recommend it because the idea of a Linux phone is truly exciting. Now, the problem is that even if Wi-Fi triangulation does not exist on an Android phone, the problem is that your phone is still announcing your MAC address and you're still going to be a victim to Facebook. Watch my video on MAC address and Facebook. So your phone is going to be a victim to Facebook because Facebook will track your MAC address and follow you around the zucking world and say, I have seen that zucking MAC address. And, and, uh, and what do we do? Well, that's easy because it's a Linux phone. And I do this on these devices. I spoof MAC addresses on these. These have all of spoof MAC addresses. So because a, it's a Linux phone, I can easily run something called Mac Changer and change the MAC address on a Linux phone easily. So if I change the MAC address on the Linux phone, I'm not going to worry about Facebook tracking my MAC address because it's not going to work. Even if they could track the Wi-Fi, it's not going to work if you keep changing the MAC address. Okay, this don't use MAC Changer, by the way. You can't use MAC Changer because these are servers. MAC Changer will only work on clients. Okay, so we're going to run MAC Changer on the Linux. So I'm going to get the device and put... Uh, Mac changer on that and then that will change the Mac address. That'll solve the Wi-Fi problem. I'll be running Linux. I can install Linux apps on a $59 phone and when I want to protect myself from Wi-Fi from from the baseband problem, I just unplug the SIM card. Uh, no, Nico, no. You can, uh, I move my uh, SIM card around constantly. Uh, I, you know, I, you know, I, uh, I change my device. I move it to my uh, iPhone. I move it back to BlackBerry Bold, to uh, Android Alcatel. You know, I, I, uh, uh, a Pix Google Pixel. I move my SIM card around everywhere. Yes, uh, Pap on King, that's uh, the least of your worries. It d doesn't know just where you lived online. Somebody knows every place you're driving to and your iPhone says, you are five minutes to your destination. I said, how does Zakti know what my destination is? iPhone, Apple, 
I didn't tell you where I'm going. You are five minutes to your destination. You are 300 feet from your car. It's like, zuck you, Siri. Every time I get a new phone, oh, come on, Nico, that is not a MAC address. That's called an IMEI number. That is not a MAC address. That's an IMEI. They need that. Hello, Joe. <clears throat> That's not going to change. They're still going to ask for an IMEI, but that doesn't matter. You move it to a different device, and guess what? They're not going to ask the IMEI because they're just going to auto-detect it. Okay, the IMEI will be auto-detected. The IMEI has nothing to do with the MAC address. The MAC address is more insidious. Okay, I don't use FreeBSD. Yo, baby, yo. So, how are you doing, Joe? I'm still not going to call you Jill, Jill, because it's like, you know, you, you, you can't confuse me like in the middle of uh, four years. Okay? You can't say, well, don't call me that now. It's like, eh, uh, you know. <clears throat> So anyway, I'm really excited by this. I'm really excited by this because it, it, uh, it gives us a short-term solution. It's not perfect. Well, you told me to call you that, so then I've, you know, I've called you that since, since then. Don't change, don't, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's J-O in, in that kind of context, not J-O-E. So anyway, um, um, don't change your, uh, SSID or was it you cannot change an IMEI <laughs> hello Nestle so you can't change an IMEI if you change your IMEI you're gonna go to jail <laughs> so so don't zucking I'm not gonna tell you to zucking change your IMEI that is against the zucking law <coughs> we don't do illegal things in here oh there you go Joe this is just confusing me now. Nico, the, it, it's, I'll summarize it for you, Nico. Yes, it's illegal. You'll be like Kevin Mitnick. You'll go, go to jail. So no, they want to track who has what phone. So they're not going to give you an illegal phone. You could be a terrorist using a fake phone to deliver a, you know, a explosive device. I'm not going to even say any uh, other words because they might uh, track it on my words here. Okay, so are going to talk about the OnePlus 7T is not compatible. The only compatible device with Ubuntu Touch is OnePlus One. Okay, OnePlus One is the only one. So the only compatible devices for this, this is a nice short-term solution for 59 to 79 bucks, is to get a OnePlus One, a, a, a Nexus 5 or Nexus 4. And we can do all the basic things we can do. And if it works, they say it will work. If it works, we are in good shape. We can use the phone. We can do the internet. I can go to YouTube. I can watch videos. I can do all the normal things I, I got to do for what I've got to do. Now, I can't have all the apps. I can't run uh, uh, practical broadcasts. I can't, uh, I can't uh, uh, you know, you can still go to Facebook, but unfortunately you can still go to facebook you can still go to instagram but not the app you cannot go use the snapchat app good these are excellent things so so but you can go to any site that has a website a web app which is you know most most of them have that so that's that's not a problem so because of all that then there really isn't much of a limitation uh even though you may not like the way it looks because it's more of a web app so but at least uh Uh, no, uh, Kevin is my friend. Who's Kevin? I uh, should have worn sunglasses and beautiful cap. Okay, so, uh, can, can Facebook track your IMEI? Yes, uh, Nico, yes, they can track your IMEI. They really do track your IMEI. It's, uh, track it through your photos. Looks versus privacy. Yeah, so you want to have a phone. Okay, so let's talk about why why we're let, let's summarize this in kind of a a a clear way. 
Uh, you do not want an Android. You do not want an iPhone because these are spy bricks. They're spying on you. It's collecting data on you, listening to you. You can't even turn Siri off. In, 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 uh, uh, by the way, uh, people accidentally press Siri all the time, and they have recordings of you accidentally hitting Siri. Okay? So it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a pain. Oh, you can run Steam on Linux. Uh, okay, you you can talk in clicks like that tribe. Well, you Joe, you can run uh, you can run Steam, run some games on there. Okay, so if you want to, if you're uh, so you can see that uh, you know if if you want to avoid that, the only way is to get out of the Android and iOS world. So please, let's not even talk about that. Don't tell me that Android is Linux and all this. You know, let's let's clear the plate and say these are bad choices for privacy absolutely bad because there's no way around them okay uh, until you get out of android and ios there's nothing, nothing's going to happen the question is could you survive with um uh a custom rom like lineage os on android could you survive with that well i'm going to test that myself i don't think so I don't think so. They don't make any promises about what they took out. So I don't think so. So so I am I myself will install. I have a Google Pixel. I will erase that and put Lineage OS on there. And I'm going to test Wi-Fi triangulation to see if that works. <laughs> Apple built with privacy in mind. Ha ha ha. Life of Crawford. Come on, man. You should know better. Naked and afraid, that's what it feels like having a Zucking phone. Everything I do is being tracked by these. Then they sell it. Okay, and, that's, and you can't turn it off. I mean, the problem is, you know, you can't turn the thing off. So just merely holding it is dangerous. And, and you're being tracked by three-letter agencies, four-letter agencies, five-letter agencies, six-letter agencies, seven-letter agencies, all the way to 20 letter agents they're all tracking you some of them are not even agencies can't even take the, oh, oh that's the worst place to take it to the party so Kevin yes Kevin Mitnick lives, lives here in LA somewhere he's uh you know he's a consultant now so anyway uh because uh because of uh because of that then the only solution that I can come up with that is semi-secure is to go Linux. Now, there's many, many advantages to Linux, and I have other videos because of something called convergence. That's in my current... James Pryor, my goodness, that's an old name right there. I don't mean old in age, but a, uh, an old friend. So let me, let, me just, uh, uh, let me just repeat the... Wow, my battery's running out. Hold on. Let me just uh, recharge okay so let me uh let me how are you doing james okay so uh 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 oh your old analog cell phones are not going to work because the carriers no longer accept 2g so you don't have a choice anymore so we're kind of stuck we need lte we need all that okay so we're kind of stuck i had nexus 5 with lineage os with no Google services, most apps were from F-Droid. Would nice to see with your testing if there are any Wi-Fi triangulation. That's what I want to prove, SkyBear. That's what I want to prove because I think that uh, that simply because it has to be compatible with the uh, APK apps with permissions and all that, that they have to include that in there. And if it's not, then maybe we have a partial solution even if you just do... A, I don't believe that this is the case, but hey, you never know until you actually test it. A lot of stuff is not known until you actually try it. So at the moment, at the moment, you even have Google Fiber, Zach. So uh, just use a VPN, Nico. I sell a VPN, but by VPN. You can be in Google Fiber, but if you're in a VPN, then, then you're good. I arrived in time for the, uh, the what? Refrain? You never know, break it first. So I will try it. <clears throat> and I'll give you, give, give you the feedback. And uh, it, you know, it's going uh, to be exciting to see 
if it works with Linux because there's so many advantages to Linux because you can install anything on Linux. I can write my own programs. There's no limitation. Nobody stops me. I don't have to go to the app store. Nobody will block you because of politics or because it's, uh, you know, because it's illegal or this or that. Nobody cares. You can do anything you want with Linux. You can run Steam, you know, run your games. I don't do any gaming, but if you want to do gaming, you can do that. You can run DOS games. You can, you can, uh, you know, you can run DOS programs using Wine, whatever. All of that, that's secondary. That's secondary purpose for all this. Uh, the primary purpose is to see if we can use it as a safe phone. Don't show NIP. You can do whatever you want on. If you want to do that on Linux, you can do so on Linux. <laughs> if you want to do that on Linux, uh, Joe, you can do it on Linux. You can't do it on iOS. You can't do it on Android. You can't do it on Periscope. Well, maybe they, you can do it on Periscope. But you can do it on Linux. No, There's no police on Linux. Linux is open source. Nobody cares. Do whatever you want. There's no Apple Pay on Linux. Thus gut booting my favorite Windows XP. There you go. Big boy. Hello, oh my gosh, big boy. I haven't seen you in ages, my friend. What happened to you? So, and most likely open BSD. What the Zuck? You keep talking about BSD. You can get hacked. and Yes, you can do that, Joe. But chances of getting hacked are less because you are not root. Uh, Linux, by default, assumes you have to be really dumb to get hacked. Been getting healthy? Uh, so you're not a big boy now? Now you're a manly man? <clears throat> now you're muscle boy? <laughs> big boy is like muscular now instead of big boy. <clears throat> They'll stop watching me right away. <laughs> wow, big boy. Wow. That's awesome. Now you're lean boy. <laughs> you're lean boy. And I know big boy's not a boy. I don't know why he calls himself big boy, even though he's not a boy. So <clears throat> let's group up and scare everyone. I am having gastric surgery. Uh, I hope that works well. I've uh, seen some people that that really worked well. Fluffy Keto. Uh, I am. Yes, I know you're a man, big boy. You, you have your profile picture. Oh, but big boy, you may not know we're on we're on YouTube now. You need to switch to YouTube. Forget the Periscope stuff. Go on YouTube. So most of the people are on YouTube. There's more people watching on YouTube now. Is that a Linux phone? This is not a Linux phone. But next week, next week, uh, well, I'm, maybe this is what might happen. Maybe I just use this phone only for broadcasting. Maybe I just leave it here. <laughs> maybe I just use this for broadcasting and don't take it with me. Okay. So that would be more exciting if that happened, if I, if I uh, you know, can afford to leave a phone. And one of the reasons I don't, do not leave this recently is because of YouTube, because I got to monitor my channel and answer comments. And I can't do that uh, without a browser. I can't do that on the uh, BlackBerry Bolt. So the BlackBerry Bolt, as a recommendation, is a fail for me. Yes, I used it for a while. But based on what I do now, it's a fail. So it's more of a burner phone now. You know, if I need to, to use a different chip, I put a different SIM card on it, have a different phone number, I can use the the uh, the BlackBerry Bolt for that, but it's not it's not my main daily driver. So so I want to avoid the you know using it as a daily driver. So so uh, uh, so anyway, you don't need the, an app store with the you don't need an app store with Linux Starlight. You can install anything you want. It's called APT. Apt. Just type app, you know, install, whatever. And you can, it'll install it. I mean, it's not to about Linux. Somebody, somebody was arguing with me about uh, my comment on the video that I said Linux doesn't have a file system. And uh, uh, yeah, appointment get or appointment uh, or uh, appointment APT get or APT without the get. It depends. 
<clears throat> so um, yeah so apt get install or apt install sponge hello sponge he's not on youtube sponge is not on youtube so anyway uh, uh hey old friends on periscope move over to youtube now come on my friends i mean you've been friends for years so for those of you on YouTube, you may not know it, but I've been broadcasting for many years and there are 30,000 of these friends on Periscope and I got these 30,000 to move on to YouTube so we get 30,000 on YouTube instead of the mere, however many I have, like close to 3,400 on, uh, on YouTube, which is small number. I've seen you on YouTube. Yeah, I've a small number on YouTube. Oh, you're Boar. Boar on... See, I forget your name on... Uh, I forget your name on YouTube, nerdy. Okay, so... So... Uh, uh, go to YouTube. Okay. So anyway, back, back to what I'm saying. So this is going to be exciting. If we can get this to work, then we have a, a short-term solution. You can save your money. Save your money. You do not have to buy some expensive phone. I'm telling you right now, this may be the time to say... Hey, maybe I don't spend my money buying a sucking new phone. Maybe Rob has a solution here where we install uh, Ubuntu Touch. Okay, and it, uh, uh, all you need is a computer. You plug in the USB and you install Ubuntu Touch. Very, very simple. Okay, doesn't require anything complicated to do this. So if you can do this, all you do is put a USB cord into the phone. Yes, a bunch of you called UB ports, boycott box UB ports. So I'm going to try this uh, when I get the new phone. It is limited to just a few models. The good models, the ones that are uh, very compatible, are the Nexus 4, Nexus 5, and the OnePlus One. Plus uh, One. You have to go to the website for Instagram. You can go to the Instagram website. Why would you want to go to a, uh, you know, Zuckbook property, I have no idea, but if you want to go to Zuckbook, whatever, nobody's going to stop you on Linux, even though it's zucked up. My Rotan. Okay, uh, so any thoughts in the note? No, I do not have a thought on the note. I just told you, big boy, think about maybe not getting one of these new phones for the holidays. Maybe you save your money and get yourself a Linux computer instead. How about getting yourself a Linux laptop? You can get a nice Linux laptop for 500 bucks. <clears throat> How about a nice Linux laptop with nice IPS screen and, uh, you know, between five, uh, 400 to, let's just say 500 to, to uh, 900 bucks for a nice laptop, Linux, full powered, uh, and save your money for that instead of wasting money on a phone that is spying on you. How about a Linux laptop and a cheap phone, like a OnePlus One, a uh, Nexus 5, Nexus 4, and then maybe next year there'll be more options like the Pine Foam and the Librem 5, which I still want, but you know, I, I actually found that the, the uh, OnePlus One is more powerful than the Librem 5 that I paid $720 for. I paid $720 for the Librem 5 and the OnePlus One has better specs. Zuck! For 59 bucks. <coughs> for 59 bucks. <coughs> depreciated value. Okay, get it depreciated. Yeah, those OnePlus phones are leading RN. What does that mean? That figures. So, yeah, so one plus one is actually, you know, no, no less in specs than a $700 uh, Librem 5. The only problem is it doesn't have a hardware switch. It doesn't have a hardware switch. So, solution, take off the SIM card. That's like turning off the modem. And then... Uh, 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 do use uh, uh, a utility to change the MAC address on Linux. It's called Mac Changer, and that will, you know, move your MAC address around. And so, even if they track you, it doesn't make any difference. 
some motos some motos are uh, compatible with the uh, Ubuntu touch I don't know about that specific version so I said my OS too much use MX Linux 59 bucks so yes no one plus one only any other one plus is not compatible they only made it work this, this is the problem with Linux you know it everything has to do with a driver uh, the whole secret to Android are the drivers which is built into the Android this is why we never have to worry about compatibility with any Android operating system because the drivers are part of Android okay and and they're using that to control us that's why every one of these they've con android has managed to control google has managed to control the world with the most popular operating system just by saying we're going to control all the drivers we're going to dictate what hardware you can use on android and they they, they basically dictated they're they're, they're going to use only what they uh can deal with or accept so so then everyone else can d doesn't have a choice because they you know they don't encounter the hardware so a lot of these linux boxes they cannot deal with the drivers because you know they, they don't have access to them so it's a very very big difficulty for linux to to uh conform to every single possible device because they have drivers that, that don't exist for them so that's why the limitation now that's why you want custom phones that actually made for Linux like a Librem 5 and a uh, Pine phone because they actually put the driver in advance they decided okay we're gonna put that in there so given that the only choice that you have is always to find an old phone that's supported by one of these builds so Ubuntu touch only supports a limited set and they said that their favorite one the one that really works the best with Ubuntu touch is a one plus one because yes, you're gonna have to use development mode to install Ubuntu Touch. Once it's installed, it doesn't have any more significance. Like, do not use development mode on Zucking Chrome. It's useless. Whatever happened in that phone blocks project crowdfunded? I don't know. Uh, yeah, drivers are are a pain because you know it's specialized. You know, you have to know if you have. You, let's say you're in telephony then you're an expert in telephony then you got to program it for that device and it's uh you know it's a specialty that's why it's you know that's why it's not common because it's specialized so anyway uh what did you miss uh, big boy uh okay do not do development mode on chrome and say i'm going to install linux on Chrome with development mode because every time you boot it's gonna boot you to Chrome and then while you're in Linux Chrome is watching you on Linux on the Chrome OS Zuck they don't actually allow you to Zucking delete Chrome OS from the Zucking ROM well that's not my idea of Linux if that's what you're gonna do then I'm not gonna use Zucking Chrome so I have a Chromebook there and I tried to install Linux on it because people say oh you can run Linux on a Chromebook it's like suck you you cannot really run an authentic Linux on a Chromebook unless you you have a specific model or somebody made a driver for it again the same driver problems so my specific Chromebook which is a Samsung <coughs> I cannot load Linux on it, it would be nice Uh, big boy, uh, that's Android for you. If they they choose, you know, what apps you cannot delete, because they're gonna baby you. So, like, let's say you want to say, I want to save all my pictures in my photo library. How does Zuck do you do that on Android? Oh, you can you just click on the folders on photo library and copy the files over to an SD card. No. Why don't you do it by cut box? Someone has to pay people to do that. So, so um, anyway, so I'm really excited by this because maybe uh, this Christmas will be, this Christmas will be a you know a, a different affair where, uh, you know, I don't spend money on, you know, you know I want to instead of buying, I paid thirteen hundred bucks for this, and 
Is it worth 1300 bucks, guys? That is what rooting is. I'm going to root it and put in Ubuntu Touch. A transmoya picture via USB cord from Android. Yeah, that is not... Uh, <clears throat> if you want to play that game, yeah. So, uh, um, anyway. Uh, so, this is kind of exciting because if, if I come up with a... Uh, a solution for no, you don't Google like a bunch of touch, you, you Google UB ports, UB ports. Okay, do not Google a bunch of touch, you Google UB ports. Okay, and you see this guy, uh, I think his name is Marius, Marius, and uh, I think he's, I think he's in Germany. So it's kind of a European project. So we shall see. But the original Ubuntu Touch was made by Canonical. And then they got, got rid of the project. It's open source. So somebody forked it and continued with it. So it's it's uh, UB Ports is the current name. The current community. And uh, they've been doing some work lately. In fact, the latest stable release uh, for the latest version was as recent as August 21st or so. Yes, UB ports. Eagle Source. Yes, UB ports. So I already bought my OnePlus One phone. I'm going to install. I already downloaded UB ports uh, stuff. I'm just going to plug it in and install it when I get my phone on Monday. And then, uh, you know, uh, we'll see if it's even uh, acceptable. If it's, if it's buggy as heck, I'm going to tell you. Maybe we find out that this doesn't really work because it's, you know, buggy as heck and it's, uh, you know. Well, we're going to find out when I get it. I, you know, I don't, so don't buy it yet. Okay, don't, Emerald Mystic. Deanna. Okay, so don't buy it yet. Let me, some of you get too excited and you buy things. Let me buy it. Instead of, uh, <coughs> You cannot do a live install. You have to actually, yeah, uh, yeah. Don't buy it yet. Let me try it for you because it's gonna be available to you. I'm gonna have two answers for you by next week, which is Lineage OS on a Google Pixel, as well as using UB ports Ubuntu Touch. In the meantime, if you want to buy something, buy my alarm. This is a radar alarm based on a perimeter security. Alarm sequence initiated. Okay. I'm not going to stream the install. I'm going to put on a video. Buy my super fancy surveillance camera, HD video, day night with uh, power over Ethernet, built in flash drive, uh, and motion detector. Buy my Brax Wi Fi router for VPN. And Tor routing, you can choose VPN or Tor routing. That's what you should buy. And don't spend your money on a zucking phone. <clears throat> uh, what's waterproof? Okay, the alarm is active now. If I move, it's the alarm going to fire. Okay, you see that it's red? Okay, when it's red, it means the alarm is active. You want to get a new 22 first? A 22? <laughs> what is that going to do? Kill, uh, what? Squirrels? What? 22? Come on. Would you need something like this? You don't need zucking 22s. You need something like this. 5.56. Five, No zucking 22s. See what else I have in here. I, I usually have, uh, oh here. How about this? This this is not a 22, what is that? Right, you know what that is. That is not a 22. That's a nine mil. 
This is a nine. A sponge knows a nine. Yes, it's a nine. This is a nine. And uh, <clears throat> there's your five, five, six. Okay, that's what you need. That's what you need, uh, uh, <clears throat> nerdy. Don't get any zucking 22. Come on. It's not useless. That's not useful. Be careful. You are in California. The SWAT team should uh, uh, all, you know, you, you need a permit now to buy ammo in California, but I already have them, so not the 556. Five, uh, uh -huh, I don't think I'm allowed to have those. <laughs> <laughs> Double J, you guys know your stuff. You guys know your stuff. I don't want a nine mil. We have those. I just don't like them. <laughs> you want a forty-five? You know, like uh, you like a forty-five, huh? Okay, here, forty-five. So if you want a forty-five, yeah, you can do that. But you know. <clears throat> I like these, they're solid. They're solid. <clears throat> not green trigger, not green tipped. Oh, uh, I have green tipped. They're not good though. I, I have green tipped ones of these. So yes, I, I do have a bunch of green tips, but uh, you know, what for? What for? So anyway, uh, Ariel from Argentina. You have a different name here. Okay. Hell yeah. So anyway, so um, so excited. So excited about this. We're going to talk some more tomorrow and see, uh, you know. Um, but I'm uh, I'm uh, going to uh, I'm going to uh, talk tomorrow about uh, I mean, I'm going to make do this project over the weekend and then Monday with a new phone. Try UB ports. UB port. So we'll try it out. We'll do it for real. I don't want to be theoretical about this. So I got the, you know, I got the device and uh, I picked the device that they said that is the best for them. There are many, many solutions, guys, out there. I, that people, you know, drop these words. Uh, people drop these words in, in, uh, in my uh, scopes. Like they're going to say, what about Sailfish OS? What about Graphene OS? And on and on and on. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, hold on before I read my scope comments. Uh, you've been triggered? Untrigger yourself. It's a toy. So, uh, so um, the thing about some of these solutions like Sailfish OS, Hoya, you, you hear a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, you hear uh, a lot of, you know, like solutions, they don't tell you that they're limited by what phone you can get. They're all limited. Some of them, like Hoya only runs with Sony phones. Well, you know, I don't want these kinds of limitations, so uh, so we shall see. So partly, uh, uh, you know, the fact that they're based on Android is really a big negative to me. If it's based on Android, I don't want it. So I want something that is not based on Android. I want it to be based on Linux pure, not all the corrupt corruption added to it by Google because Android is a corruption of Linux. It's a corrupted, it's like, uh, consider Android like uh, Linux with leprosy. Linux with leprosy, that's what Android is, okay? So don't come and tell me, well, Android is Linux, Zuck you. I don't want any sucking Linux with leprosy on it, okay? No leprosy, okay? I want plain, old, simple Linux. Keep it simple. Sorry, I've been uh, dealing with my kids. Oh, gonna have to watch the replay. Okay, Drac, I really like all of Rob's vids tonight. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> thank you, thank you, nerdy. So anyway, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm the one looking for solutions here, and as much as I study all these solu solutions that are, you know, people bring up to me and say, why don't you study this, study that? 
there's always some limitation and it bugs me, you know, and, and one of the things that I want to make sure is that we stop the number one problem, which is Wi-Fi triangulation and so on. So, and we need to be able to run a VPN on the device, which you can do on any Linux device pretty easily. And we need, or either that or get a, get a VPN router. Okay, I can't believe that many of you do not have VPN or Tor routers. How does that do you function in your ducking house? How do you have any safety without a ducking Tor or VPN router? Okay, and your friends come and borrow your computer and then invade your privacy by releasing your IP address on Zucking Zuckbook. Let's say track your MAC addresses. Okay, there. Get a Brax Wi Fi. By the way, just a side comment here before I run out of battery because my, my uh, iPad here is running out of battery. Uh, I had to raise my prices on these. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to raise my prices of some of the products. Uh, I apologize for that, and I didn't really have a choice. The, uh, the parts for this, this is based on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. That's the main part here. Uh, Raspberry Pi 3D Plus, you could previously get for 37 bucks, and now Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus is... Uh, Fourteen dollars more than that. You you can't. It's close to fifty bucks. Okay, so fifty one. So, I mean, I can't make I can't make a living uh, if I give the little profit that I make on this. So I don't have I don't have a choice. That is because of tariffs with China. So finally, it hit me. I can no longer buy these. I I said, how come my my products are being not being affected by the tariffs with China? Well. I guess it just took a few months. Their inventory uh, uh, de got depleted, and now we are zucked. So these things are 25% more expensive for me to buy. So all the hardware is 25% more expensive, and the biggest cost to me is that Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> so it's kind of, I'm kind of zucked, okay? Might die by car. I had a lot of accidents and never with a gun. Did you guys have a daylight savings time change? No, not yet. Uh, respect plus 1000 with a 556. You are Zuck. <laughs> just a toy. Fake name is just a Zucking toy. Okay. Don't, uh, I don't show any real weapons in, in a broadcast. These are all toys. <clears throat> okay. Somebody said, I got triggered by your gun. It's not a gun. It's a toy. It's a toy. Okay. It's an airsoft toy toy this is not real however it does look real but it's a zucking toy it does look real i i i, I will uh i will ag agree it looks very real but it's a zucking toy okay it doesn't it doesn't uh, kill you when you shoot okay i can't put ammo on it sounds real it does sound real uh, the difference between the man and the boy is the price of the toy. <laughs> Hence the trigger. Uh, five, five, six. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, how do you know this is real? They're, you know, these are just, you know, th that's not necessarily real. <clears throat> how do you know it's real? Should we like uh, hit the back of this and see what happens? Maybe we should put in a like a I can put in the the uh, uh, like a frying pan and see what happens. <coughs> Nothing's gonna happen, by the way, if you put in a frying pan. It'll light up. Everything real on Zuckbook. Yes. So anyway, uh, I have my Zuck. Uh, 30 uh, and 30 odd <laughs> and do a broadcast. Uh, nerdy, you're gonna get banned on uh, they're gonna demonetize you like heck. So, I only show toys in here, I don't want to get demonetized. I have a bottle opener that opens like a bullet, put it in a fire. I uh, Drac, 
yes, I can put this in a fire. In fact, if I have a, a can of ammo, I can put it in the fire. If your house burns, so what? It'll burn. You know, it'd be nice fireworks. <laughs> Fake name. <laughs> You're not monetized. Uh, yeah, so, you know. Yes, Drac, you, the, uh, if you put that in fire and stand next to it, it's fine. YouTube comments are not showing up on Periscope. Yes, it's not. It's not. And my, my device ran out of battery. I don't know why I'm out of power. Do not know why. Uh, it didn't charge. Okay, so I lost my, uh, I lost my uh, comments here. So, my goodness, how do I see comments? Anyway, I'm going to... I was going to end it anyway. So, okay, I lost the comments on uh, on Periscope. How do I see comments in Periscope? Okay, I lost the comments on Periscope. So, uh, uh, I still have YouTube, but I lost the comments on Periscope. I just don't want my social credit score to go down. You already have a, a uh, <clears throat> you already have a credit score. Uh, I mean, a social score, it's uh, on mylife.com. wonder if they work for China. Uh, real bullets in a fire ain't good. Uh, come on, Starlight. You should know better than that. Uh, put real bullets in fire and it'll be fireworks. So obviously it can start a fire. So you don't want that. So, but, you know, let's say you leave it outside and there's a, uh, there's a, um, what do you call this? Like you go camping and there's fire in the center of camp and you throw some bullets in there uh, and you think you're all going to die? No. We just got on to your five, I was shocked. So anyway, uh, 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 some local firefighters had exploding ammo in a uh, hurt by exploding ammo yeah it'll be because it's fire exploding ammo causes more fire so obviously you don't want that but you know because it's like like you know lighting up oil but if you think the bullets are going to fly and hit you uh don't think so okay the bullets aren't going to go flying around and then hit you so that's not how it works. A little bit of science there. Okay? So, <clears throat> so you don't have to worry about, about that part. I was always under the impression that they went off causing the bullet to unload. Uh, what will happen if you put a bullet in the fire is that the uh, casing will fly off. <clears throat> the casing. Because that's a lighter one. The casing will fly, and obviously you can be scratched by casing. You know, it hits your face, whatever. Uh, but, you know, it, the bullet isn't going to fly because the bullet's heavier. The casing will fly. So, so in a case like this, the casing is bigger. So, so yeah. So in case you didn't know that, that's just a little bit of science there. Cool, just cool would sub 2x if I could now. <laughs> Fake name. <laughs> the, ca uh, the casing and bullet go in opposite direction. Uh, not, not much. Not much because nothing, you know, is, it'll just bounce against the, uh, let's say it's an ammo box. It'll just bounce inside the ammo box a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, shrapnel, uh, no, I don't think so. That would be, uh, uh, especially if it's inside a ammo box, I don't think so. So, so one of the things that 
if you have fire in your house and you have ammo, the last thing you want to do is go, I got to go save the ammo because I might cause bullets to fly and hit people. And it's like, no, just leave it. Go, go home, go away from the fire and, uh, you know, and uh, inform somebody that there's ammo there because that area will probably light up like fireworks. So don't do it, kids. <laughs> I used to take 22 bullets and pliers so a hammer and hit the back of it uh, for fun always aiming at the ground though well that's a little bit different uh, drag because you're probably putting inside a vice if you hold a, a bullet in a vice and hit the back well that's not good <laughs> okay so yes don't do that it's a bad thing don't do that I'm just giving you a little science folks so some people say I'm getting triggered by all this talk, I'm getting triggered. It's like, suck. We're talking science here. Okay. Take the human safety course. That works. We put one in a vice. Yes, I did that as a kid too. That's not a good thing. Do not put it in a vice. But but uh, if, you, if you left it in a can, you know, just loose. You know. If it's just loose like this, you know, it can't do anything so loose ammo doesn't do anything so FYI uh, I'm laying here laughing so like drag saying well I'm gonna put in a vice and I'm gonna go snap on the back that's pretty stupid drag why did you do that get back on track now we're gonna <clears throat> um, your forte electronics can a smart TV Wi-Fi triangulate you uh, um, uh, no need. A smart TV can identify your IP address and can do IP address reverse IP lookup. So you need a VPN. So you can always throw it at someone. Might hurt then. Yes, I'm going to take my 22 and go home. Okay, so so Double J uh, wants me to stay on topic, but actually the topic is finished because we're, we're going to close the broadcast. So my, my, my iPad here died. I guess it was not charged and uh, it died. So now I don't have any power on the iPad. So for that reason, I can't see the comments on Periscope. Sorry, Periscope. I cannot see your comments at all. So if you want to see uh, me to see your comments, go on, go on YouTube. But we're going to end soon anyway. So uh, let them get triggered. That happens a lot. Hey, it's past my bedtime. I'm on Eastern time. Uh, okay, U D M uh, B F C K X. <laughs> I, I, uh, what a zucking name! Who knows? Brax was such a wild kid. I am not a wild kid. Uh, I'm not a wild kid. In fact, I was, uh, you know, uh, but I was, you know, I was threatened on a broadcast, and I didn't want to. Didn't want to go uh, with that being, uh, you know, something I'm unprepared for. So I, uh, I prepared myself. So, and uh, practice some more. So, can you please play Requiem Drag? No, I can't do that. Uh, I guess I could do that, but I don't remember how to play it because uh, YouTube. You know, I guess I could play Requiem that that alone, but uh, I forgot how to play it. So Periscope comments are dead. Well, I can't read Periscope comments anymore. So I'm kind of zucked. So, but so guys, don't don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow. So, but then I'm gonna be busy making the videos. Those videos are very hard to make, guys. I mean, uh, that last video took several days to make. And some people are saying, "Well, oh, I could have gotten that information from uh, reading a comparison somewhere." It's like, fuck. You know, some of these people just don't have any appreciation for, for what I have to do. <clears throat> you think that data was just, uh, you know, some simple simple analysis. I found out that the Librem 5 CPU is many, many times more powerful than a Raspberry Pi. Okay, certainly more than 10 times more powerful. Uh, uh, Maybe it's 15 times more powerful than Raspberry Pi. Maybe 20 times more powerful than Raspberry Pi. That is good to know because I know how a Raspberry Pi works. 
So if it's going to be much faster than Raspberry Pi, then it's going to be snappy and it's going to be useful. Okay? So, but strangely enough, a one plus one is about the same CPU speed. So, so a one plus one is, uh, in some ways, even faster in uh, in uh, in uh, processor speed. It's like two point five gigahertz, and a uh, a uh, Librem five is only one point five gigahertz. So at least I knew that. I mean, I had to figure that out because I didn't know what what is the basis for you know, measuring the speed of a Librem 5 with a IMX8M. I mean, who the heck knows what an IMX8M is? You know, these are not like Intel processors that we're familiar with. There's no way to, you know, compare it. So, tomorrow should be adult. So, yeah, so tonight was adult beverage night. I did have a lot of adult beverages. I, I, uh, I, uh, I uh, admit to that. Okay, so anyway, I have a gig tomorrow morning. I've got got to play music at 9 a.m. all the way to the afternoon. So uh, we're going to call it a night. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, what What is that? A lot? Uh, yes, Adult Beverage Friday. I always have Adult Beverage Friday. Okay, so yes, Adult Beverage Friday. It's... Uh, a lot well it depends on what's in it so in this case it was uh uh it was a full glass kind of like you know long island sized couple of those so that's a lot in you know if you do that in an hour so that's a lot so anyway um how do you stop drinking to live <laughs> what <laughs> anyway okay i did not have a long island but it's kind of like that it was some custom margarita that you know was full of so much liquor that was kind of a long island it's kind of the same thing it was a full glass full of liquor so yeah i'm sure there were many shots in that several shots yes in one so, and I had, I tried to do two. I don't think I even finished the, the second one because I had to broadcast. Live stream. Okay, so anyway, be back tomorrow and then uh, we'll continue with this topic or or come up with something new and maybe we get more information. So, research ubports.com. That's what I'm going to try on Monday, ubports.com. And if this works, we will have a cheap phone we can use for the meantime while we wait for those Linux phones to mature. Okay, so that's uh, our project for next week. UB ports. Have fun this weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>